Welcome to the first Public Information Center for the Bradford Street Corridor Class Environmental Assessment Study. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional territory of the Anishinaabek people, which include the Ottawa, Ojibwe, and Potawatomi Nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We also acknowledge the Huron-Wendat Nation, who occupied these lands prior to the middle of the 17th century. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and recognize the enduring presence of Indigenous peoples on this land. We are committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples. This is the first of three Public Information Centres, or PICs, planned for this study. The intent of this video presentation is to provide an overview of the PIC material. If you wish to review the content in more detail, a static version of the presentation is available as a PDF file on the city's website at the link shown on the slide. This package can be downloaded at any time for review at your own convenience. While your feedback is welcome at any time during the study, we ask that any comments on this PIC package be provided by February 25th, 2022, so that the project team can incorporate your feedback into the next phase of study. We encourage you to submit your input and feedback through the project webpage. The purpose of this PIC is to introduce the study, outline the study schedule and class EA process, review planning context and existing conditions, review problems and opportunities and possible solutions, present early design concepts, and obtain community feedback and identify next steps. The Provincial and Municipal Policy Framework provides a backdrop to the planning process and guides infrastructure, land use planning, and strategic investment decisions. It is important to have an understanding of this context early in the planning process to ensure decision making is aligned with the city's growth and transportation objectives. Barrie City Centre is designated as an urban growth centre in the province's growth plan. Land use in this urban growth centre is transitioning to higher density mixed use consistent with provincial policies and the city's own downtown revitalization plans. To support this growth, the transportation network must be thoughtfully planned in a way that offers safe and convenient mobility for all road users, including drivers, transit riders, pedestrians, cyclists, mobility device users, and other forms of active transportation. This study is focused on long range corridor planning to confirm future multimodal needs on Bradford Street. Multimodal transportation planning considers the needs of different road users to plan for and build a network that offers transportation options that are accessible and effectively integrated. This study is considering the future needs of active transportation users, transit and vehicles over the next three decades. The study will also identify opportunities to improve traffic operations and safety, streetscape design to complement future land uses, and the property required to accommodate these improvements. Currently, no capital works are planned for Bradford Street. However, this study may generate interim recommendations that could be considered in the short term. The Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Process is a planning and approval framework for municipal infrastructure used to identify possible adverse effects of proposed infrastructure projects on the environment. Given the scale of the study, our Class EA process has four primary phases, each with opportunities for agency, public, and Indigenous community engagement. We are currently in phase two of this process and are hosting this PIC to review the background information gathered and problems and opportunities identified in phase one and the alternative solutions that are being considered in phase two. Based on the feedback gathered through this PIC, the alternative solutions will be assessed and the preferred solution for the corridor will be confirmed and presented at PIC number two. Thereafter, the study will progress to developing design alternatives in phase three. In phase four, an environmental study report will be prepared to document the study recommendations and decision-making process. This report will be available for public review at the end of the study. Barrie's growth forecasts are based on the province's growth plan. Barrie is currently planning for a population that will almost double in the next 30 years. The city's urban growth center will be the focus of intensification to accommodate planned growth. The city will manage this growth through the construction of high density mixed use developments in the city center and improving access to more sustainable mobility options like walking, cycling and transit while creating safer and more attractive streets. 
taller residential buildings will be encouraged, which will capitalize on the nearby waterfront as a key development attraction. Residential developments will be accompanied by commercial spaces that enable people to live and work within a completed, urban-friendly, walkable community. Intensification is the process of increasing the density of an already built-up area through redevelopment and infill. This slide illustrates the intensification underway in Barry's downtown. Active developments are highlighted in blue on the map. This intensification will help foster a more active urban environment by making places more accessible to walking and cycling and creating more vibrant public spaces to enhance a feeling of community. The city's 2019 Transportation Master Plan, or TMP, provides direction on transportation investments to 2041 with a focus on providing safe, efficient, and accessible mobility choices. For Bradford Street, the TMP includes a few key findings and recommendations. The existing four lanes will provide capacity for traffic volumes forecast to 2041. Therefore, no new travel lanes are being proposed. There is a desire to attract traffic away from Lakeshore Drive. Therefore, Bradford Street must offer a good level of service for vehicular traffic and transit. Space should be protected for a two-way center left turn lane or median to provide flexibility in meeting future needs. Tiffin Street intersections operate poorly now and this issue will continue to worsen. Therefore, intersection improvements are needed. There is also a need to enhance mobility and provide a sense of livability and safety in the streetscape. Cycling facilities and an improved pedestrian and street environment are required to support these objectives. Building on the TMP, the Bradford Street Class CA will be taking a closer look at traffic operations in the corridor to 2051 to identify further issues and needs. This could include intersection reconfiguration, additional turning lanes, traffic signals and signal timing, and or other modifications. The city's TMP also includes a comprehensive active transportation strategy that provides a blueprint for enhancing walking and cycling infrastructure accommodating planned growth and improving mobility options and equity. The TMP recommends a cycle track on Bradford Street, which is aligned with the city's vision to offer a continuous, well-connected and safe active transportation network for residents and visitors that supports recreational and commuter active transportation opportunities, enhances connectivity to key destinations, and increases mobility for users of all ages and abilities. Today, there are no cycling facilities on Bradford Street. We will use the recommendations of the Active Transportation Strategy and the recently updated Ontario Traffic Manual Book 18 to develop a cycling facility for the corridor. Factoring into our decision making about the future needs of Bradford Street is the Allendale Mobility Hub, an interregional transit hub at the Waterfront GO station to coincide with the arrival of all day GO service to Barrie. This transit hub will provide a geographically centralized hub within the city and increase transit access to the GO station. Bradford Street will be a critical multimodal transportation link between the mobility hub, the downtown mini hub on Maple Avenue, and areas for planned intensification. The next few slides focus on the existing conditions of the corridor, starting with land use. The existing land use around Bradford Street is a mix of low density residential houses and commercial businesses with some institutional uses, including city offices and the Barry Wastewater Treatment Facility towards the south end of the study area. As we have highlighted on previous slides, land use along Bradford Street is planned for transition to higher density mixed use consistent with the city's official plan. We are taking an integrated approach to transportation planning and that we are considering not only potential impacts to existing land uses, but we are anticipating how the future community will look and their needs. A review of the natural environment is being carried out in support of this study. Natural environmental features in the study area are limited to four creeks flowing into Kempenfeld Bay. These creek corridors are narrow and consist of culturally influenced vegetation communities typical of urban settings. There were no species at risk or potential habitat observed in the study area, and habitat potential is limited to urban adapted wildlife. As the study progresses, we will identify potential impacts to these watercourses and recommend mitigation measures to protect the natural features. A cultural heritage report has been prepared to inventory known and potential built heritage resources and cultural heritage landscapes in the study area. 
Background historical research is used to determine the presence of sensitive heritage features that correspond to 19th and 20th century settlement and development patterns. In addition to this research, the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture Industry screening tool and professional expertise is used to identify properties as potential built heritage resources and cultural heritage landscapes. A number of potential and known heritage resources have been identified in the study area, including three properties on the Municipal Heritage Register. The Allendale Station, designated under the Ontario Heritage Act, is located adjacent to our study area. Heritage resources will be considered through the decision-making process. Once a preferred design has been selected, the report will be updated to include a heritage impact assessment and recommend mitigation measures. This map depicts the location of identified built heritage resources and cultural heritage landscapes in the study area. We encourage you to download the PDF file of this information package on the city's website to review this map in more detail. A stage one archeological assessment has been completed for the Bradford Street corridor to assess archeological potential and confirm where further archeological assessment is required. Some properties where redevelopment is already proposed have been previously assessed and will not require further study. Other areas exhibit archeological potential and will require a stage two assessment prior to any future construction. The Allendale Station is an ancestral Huron-Wendat village and ossuary with established cultural heritage value. A stage four archeological excavation is in progress and outcomes will inform the remaining work and detailed recommendations for the remainder of the property. The city is extremely sensitive to the cultural heritage significance of the Allendale Station lands. If any potential impacts are proposed in this Class EA study, all appropriate work will be undertaken to protect cultural heritage values in partnership with Huron-Wendat First Nation and the Williams Treaty First Nations. This slide provides an overview of the general transportation conditions in the corridor. Bradford Street serves an arterial function in the city's downtown, providing a north-south connection around Kempenfelt Bay. The existing roadway generally has a 20 meter right of way with two travel lanes in each direction and curbside sidewalks on both sides of the street. The posted speed is 50 kilometers per hour. The city's 2019 TMP considered future overall travel demand in the city at a network level and confirmed the four lane road capacity on Bradford Street is adequate for future growth up to 2041. As part of this study, we are taking a closer look at intersection operations to better understand the specific needs in the area in 2031, 2041 and 2051. The map on the right side of the slide illustrates the future capacity of nearby intersections during PM peak hours in 2051. By this point, the intersections at the north and south end of the study area are over capacity and will require improvements beyond those already planned by the city. In particular, the Tiffin Street intersections at Bradford Street, Essa Road and Lakeshore Drive will become very congested with long delays and potentially unsafe operating conditions. The intersections at Tiffin Street are essential nodes in the transportation network because they facilitate movement around Kempenfeld Bay. In recent years, increased demand paired with the physical configuration and short distance between the intersections is causing a number of operational issues at this location. The traffic analysis indicates that these operational issues will continue to worsen in the future and the intersections are expected to be operating beyond capacity by 2031. Based on the background information gathered and reviewed, the planning context, existing and future conditions, and early stakeholder input, we have identified several problems, opportunities, and needs for the Bradford Street Corridor. These needs include the provision of active transportation facilities for users of all ages and abilities, improving the streetscape to create a vibrant and inviting downtown, and creating a multimodal connection between the Allendale Mobility Hub and downtown. All the work up to this point has been setting the stage to develop a clear statement of the issues to be addressed by the study. The overall objective is to continue to provide critical arterial road function and improve sustainable transportation options for users of all ages and abilities. The problem and opportunity statement emphasizes planning for continued community transformation in the city's urban growth center, the importance of Bradford Street as a critical link within the city's downtown multimodal transportation network, 
the existing traffic operational and safety issues that will continue to worsen if not addressed, and the opportunity to plan for the future needs of Bradford Street now and protect adequate right of way to accommodate cycling, improve the pedestrian and streetscape environment, and provide future flexibility for the city to improve the corridor in a way that promotes community activity and vibrancy. A key question that came out of early stakeholder feedback was whether Bradford Street could be reduced to two travel lanes. The project team has included this option among the alternative planning solutions for review and consideration. One of the key aspects that we will need to consider is how traffic is distributed within the downtown road network and the impact to roads that will result from removing travel lanes on Bradford Street. For example, increased traffic on Lakeshore Drive or impacts to transit efficiency on Bradford Street. We note also that maintaining four lanes now does not preclude future decision to reduce lane capacity and provides the city with the most flexibility in planning for the next 30 years, recognizing that specific needs within the right of way may change in the future. These aspects will be explored in the next few months. We have identified six alternative planning solutions that will be assessed in how they address the problems and opportunities for Bradford Street. The do nothing solution maintains the existing corridor with no improvements and serves as a baseline to which other alternatives are compared. Access management focuses on integrating surrounding land use redevelopment to reduce the number of individual driveways and accesses to improve traffic flow and reduce the number of potential conflict points with pedestrians and cyclists. Operational improvements address traffic operational issues and could include intersection reconfiguration, two-way center left turn lane, or other changes such as signal timing. Bradford Street corridor improvements addresses multimodal and traffic operational needs on Bradford Street and includes cycling facilities, improved sidewalk and streetscape environment, improved transit infrastructure, and addressing geometric deficiencies while maintaining the existing four travel lanes within an expanded right-of-way. Reduced travel lanes on Bradford Street is similar to option four, but looks at a reduction of travel lanes on Bradford Street. Lastly, improve other north-south corridors considers improvements to other parallel roads instead of Bradford Street. The assessment and evaluation of the alternative planning solutions considers numerous criteria across a broad range of socioeconomic, cultural, natural environment, transportation, and technical factors. At this stage, we've completed a very preliminary review of some of the pros and cons to each alternative. Please refer to the PDF file of this information package on the city's website to review this table in more detail. Our work over the next few months will involve a more comprehensive assessment and evaluation of the alternative planning solutions. More than one solution may be carried forward to ensure the future function and design of Bradford Street is aligned with the city's strategic priorities. We encourage you to provide your input on these alternative solutions as this feedback will help to inform the assessment process. The preferred solutions will be presented at the next Public Information Center planned for spring 2022. Following the selection of the preferred planning solutions, the design process consists of key decision points for various roadway components. This is considered phase three of the EA process illustrated earlier on slide seven. The diagram on the slide highlights the key components of the roadway design. The first step is to identify design considerations and constraints that should be factored into the design. These may be desired functions, physical features, geometric requirements, or limitations that could influence future design decisions. As the design progresses and our knowledge of conditions and constraints evolve, it is typical to have iterations at each step along the way. As we initiate the design phase, we look at the corridor through different lenses to identify various considerations and constraints that will guide the development of the design. The points on this slide have been developed based on the study objectives and input from stakeholders. Key design considerations include technical design requirements, consideration of major utilities, transit needs such as space and types of amenities for transit stops, cycling facility needs and tie into the broader cycling network, and integration with developments, including access. While the preferred solutions are being assessed, the project team is looking ahead to possible concepts for the intersection configurations on Tiffin Street and different cycling facility options for the corridor. These are presented on the next few slides to invite early public input and discussion. 
Two intersection concepts have been developed for Tiffin Street. The first involved conventional signalized intersections and the second involves roundabouts. We are introducing these design concepts to provide the public with an early view and invite feedback. There is still much work to be done in refining all of the details, but these concepts provide us with an idea of the footprint impacts associated with addressing the existing and future issues on Tiffin Street. This slide depicts two reconfigured signalized intersections at Bradford Street and Lakeshore Drive. Traffic signals would be coordinated to manage queuing between the intersections. You will notice that the concept includes some correction to the curb on Bradford Street, north of Tiffin Street. This has been made to meet technical design standards. Please review the details by going to the PDF file of the information package on the city's website. In this concept, multi-lane roundabouts are used in place of signalized intersections. Tiffin Street has been realigned at the approaches to the roundabouts to meet technical design requirements. As with the signalized intersection option, there is still a lot of work to be done in refining all of the details, but this concept provides us with an idea of the footprint impacts associated with the roundabouts. Roundabouts are being considered because they have a number of potential benefits, including lower speeds and fewer conflict points, high vehicular traffic capacity, less idling and reduced emissions, lower maintenance costs, and opportunities for landscaping within the footprint. However, we recognize that a roundabout option in an urban environment carries disadvantages, including a large footprint and property impacts, potential navigational challenges for pedestrians and cyclists, and in the context of Tiffin Street, the pedestrian and cyclist crossing would likely require a tailored solution that may reduce the traffic capacity and efficiency of the roundabout. The roundabout option will be fully assessed and evaluated against the conventional intersection design, considering multiple factors and impact to all users. The context and setting will be significant factors in this assessment. Cycling facilities are a key component of the design for Bradford Street to support the creation of a multimodal transportation network in downtown Barrie. The city's 2019 TMP proposed cycle tracks on Bradford Street. As part of this study, we are considering the original TMP recommendation and using recently updated provincial guidance in Ontario Traffic Manual Book 18 that reflects current design guidelines and best practices. The three-step framework to determine a suitable cycling facility type for a specific roadway corridor is summarized on the right side of the slide. Step one of the process is to select the preferred level of separation and set of facility types based on vehicle speeds, volumes, and the road cross-section. The outcome of this step will then be examined further in the context of the road design and documented in steps two and three. Based on the posted speed and anticipated volumes on Bradford Street, physically separated cycling facilities are necessary. These facilities include elements such as curbs, planters, and bollards that provide physical separation between people riding bikes and motor vehicle traffic. Facility types include physically separated bike lanes, cycle tracks, and multi-use paths. A key difference between physically separated bike lanes and cycle tracks is the elevation of the cycling facility. Physically separated bike lanes are on street, whereas cycle tracks are elevated above the vehicle lanes. A distinguishing factor of multi-use paths is that they are shared by cyclists and pedestrians. The next few slides will present some different ideas of what these options can look like. Physically separated bike lanes are at street level and are separated from vehicle lanes by a horizontal buffer and a physical barrier such as a planter, bollard, or curb. The physical separation provides most cyclists with a more comfortable riding environment compared with shared roadways or conventional bike lanes, but they may not be as inviting as a facility that is horizontally and vertically separated from vehicles. Cycle tracks are a physically separated bikeway that are horizontally and vertically separated from vehicle lanes by a curb and a horizontal buffer. They are often parallel to the sidewalk, but are designated exclusively for people riding bikes. We are considering two different locations for the placement of the cycle track in the Bradford Street corridor. The different placements may offer advantages from an operations and maintenance perspective, such as snow storage and winter clearance. In this example, the cycle track is located next to the roadway. In this option, the cycle track is located between the boulevard and the sidewalk. The boulevard provides more separation between the roadway and cyclists. 
In this cross section, a tactile strip is typically placed between the cycle track and the sidewalk to delineate the separate areas designated for pedestrians and cyclists. Lastly, an in boulevard multi use path is horizontally and vertically separated from vehicle traffic by a boulevard. This facility type provides two way travel that is a shared facility between pedestrians and cyclists. The choice of a shared multi-use path or a separate cycling track and sidewalk is context dependent. Where the volume of path users is high, mixing of pedestrians and cyclists can potentially lead to increased conflicts between users. This is more likely to occur in higher volume pedestrian areas, such as at transit stops or through shopping areas. After we receive and consider the feedback gathered from this PIC, the next step is to confirm the preferred solution and the nature of the improvements to the Bradford Street corridor. The outcomes of this step will be presented at PIC number two to be held this spring. Following the selection of the preferred solutions, we will move into phase three of the EA process and the design concepts will be further developed and formally evaluated to identify the preferred design alternative. Preliminary design of the recommended plan will be presented at PIC number three, planned for fall 2022. After this consultation milestone, the preliminary design and impact assessment will be finalized. Lastly, the environmental study report will be prepared to document the study findings. We appreciate the time you've taken to learn more about this study and are looking forward to hearing your feedback on the materials presented at this PIC. To provide your input, please visit the public input section of the project website. If you would like more information about this study or an alternative way to provide feedback, please reach out to City Project Manager Brett Gratrix directly. Once again, thank you for your interest and participation in this study.